All right, so this is AP Calculus AB self-check 6.3. You gave yourself 15 minutes to do question number six from 2010. Um, you should be giving yourself 15 minutes every single time because that's exactly how much time you'll have on the AP test. Again, each question is 15 minutes and there's a total of six questions. So that's 90 minutes, so an hour and a half of doing free response questions. Let's do part A. So we need, we have all this information, lovely. We need to write an equation of the line tangent. Equation of the line tangent. That should spark something in your memory that should think, or you should think y minus something is equal to the slope or the derivative, right, times x minus the x coordinate. All right, so we have our general equation. Now we just need to fill in what we have. Okay, so I have x is equal to 1. So that's very clearly x is equal to 1. What is our y coordinate? Well, when I plug in the y coordinate, the x is 1. The y coordinate must be 2. It tells you it right there, so 2. Better 2. Um, and then I need to find the derivative here. So this is always the, the f prime of whatever x was, in this case, f prime of 1. Well, when I plug in the derivative, well, there it is. I plug in my x and y into this thing, and that will be the derivative. This is the slope, right? And this is the slope. So I come back here and I say, OK, I have dy dx is equal to x y cubed. So if I plug in 1 for x, and let me ch uh, change the color here. Um, to back to blue, I guess. If I change the 1 to x, or x to 1, and then the y to 2, and that's still the power of 3, that's still the slope, and then 2 to the power of 3 is 8, 8 times 1 is 8, so that means this is equal to 8. So I come over back over here and say, this was 8. Done. There's your point. Um, how many points do we actually get here? Let me open up my scoring guides, open those. Um, scoring guide for 6.3. Um, if you find just f prime, if you find 8, that's a whole point. And then if you find the answer, which there it is, they did it in a different form here, but that's fine. You'll still get the answer like this. Um, so you get plus 1 point for just getting 8, the slope, and then you get plus 1 point for getting the rest of the equation, plugging in 1 and 2 correctly. Let's move on to part B, the tangent line equation. Oh, we're so, so if you didn't get part A, you can't even do part B. That's unfortunate, but here it goes. Um, and given that um, the height is uh, positive, um, is this approximation greater or less than? Okay, so that'll be helpful. So I'm using this equation, let's rewrite it again. Y minus two is equal to eight times the quantity of X minus one. And in the place of X, now I'm gonna plug in 1.1. That's saying X is 1.1. We're gonna see what that height is. So we're gonna say Y minus two, I guess I can add the two to the other side. I'm gonna eventually do that anyway. Is equal to eight times 1.1 minus the t or sorry, plus the two, because I had to add two to both sides, right? So from there, eight times 1.1, 1. 1, right. oh my gosh, what have I done? Uh, sorry, log it if you caught it, minus one, there it is, <laughs> uh, and then plus two. Whew. All right, now 1.1 1. 1 minus one is 0. 0.1, that's just 0. 0.1, and then that 0. 0.1 times eight is 0. 0.8, and then plus two is 2.8, so y here is equal to 2.8. Lots of mental math, I'm sure you guys can follow that. Um, so let's see, do we get a point for that? Um, approximation, yes, you should get about 2.8, and that's one point for that approximation. So come back over here, wait, I got the right, yeah, 2.8, whew, I wanna make sure I get the right answer here. That's plus one. And then we need to ask, or answer, is it a, a greater or less than? Is it an over approximation or an under approximation? The only thing that we care about in this case is the second derivative, and let me, do the graphical um, explanation here. So assume that the second derivative, aka the concavity, is uh, positive. If the concavity is positive at some point, then we use a tangent line, so we've got a point here, when it should have been up there, which means if our, on this graph, um, and I'll write my rule over here and then delete all this work. If, um, I'll just say y double prime is positive. If this, if it's concave up, then we are going to have an under approximation because we guessed here and it should have been here. So that's um, if y double prime is greater than zero, uh, then under approximation. And you can probably guess the other one. If y double prime is less than zero, then over. And let me show you why that works. So if I have a graph over here where it's a downward curve, and I have, I don't know, some tangent to the line right here, and I guess right here, but it's supposed to be down here, I guess too high than what it should have been. Um, so that's your little shortcut, I'll leave that written, I'll delete all those graphs, because we need that room. Um, we need to find the second derivative. 
Oh, no, we don't. It gave us a second rip. Oh, so easy. Okay, so there it is. They used product rule correctly. Um, and then they simplified, of course. So I just need to plug in um, my coordinates. And it tells me that, yes, um, the heights are always going to be positive. They'd never switch. So this height, too, is always going to be positive. I can basically plug in 2 and 1, essentially, is what it's saying. Don't have to worry about the sign changing. Um, if I do that, I'm going to get... Um, I only care about the positive or negative again, so I'm just going to say, in terms of this equation, I'll, can I just use technology to, you know, grab this guy and paste it down here? I can. Ah, oh, I love that. I'll make it bigger so you know that I copied and pasted it. So what I'm essentially doing is I'm plugging in um, values and I'm seeing if it's positive or negative, so I have to check this guy. Well, that is why. Y is positive. This is going to be positive. So I can kind of ignore him. Um, 1 plus, oh, I should write down, 1 plus 3 times, I'm going to plug in a positive squared and positive squared. Well, this is always positive. This is always positive. This is positive. I'm adding to a positive. That's all positive. So it's a positive times a positive, which is clearly a positive, which means this is the second derivative. The second derivative is positive. If it's positive, then we have an under approximation. So we want to say that somehow we need to say a notation because you have to show your work, right? You have to say that y double prime is positive. You have to come to some conclusion, and you can say that implies that we have an under approximation. Approximation. That's it. You don't have to talk about the first derivative or anything like that. Or you can say it's an under approximation because y double prime is greater than zero. Somehow you have to say this and you have to say this. That's how you get your other point from this problem. So plus one. So come back over here to the solution guide. Um, yes, that one was out of two points. There it is. Um, I haven't been saying this, but you should have said how many points out of two you got for part A, how many points out of two you got for part B. And since we've used up four points, that means there's five points to put into part C to add up to nine, right? Okay. So, particular solution. That means that we're using the separate, integrate, evaluate, isolate type of thing. So isolate is obviously optional again. So separate. Let's go ahead and I'm going to use technology again. I'm going to command shift four, grab you, yoink, uh, paste you down here, and make it bigger so people know that I copied and pasted it. It's not supposed to be there. Um, cross multiply. This is going to be divided by one. Cross. Oh, let me cross with a different color. I'm going to cross multiply there with yellow, so one dy. Or you can just leave that dy, right? And then on the right hand side, I'm going to do that with green. It's going to be x, y to the power of 3, dx. All right, so I haven't separated yet. I just cross multiplied. I need to get all of my y's on one side. I just needed to divide by, um, by y to the power of 3 in this case. So y to the power of 3, divide by y to the power of 3. When I do that, those cancel out, and I get 1 over y to the power of 3, dy, is equal to x, dx. I have officially done the separation of variables, which is usually a point, and it is, it is indeed saying separation of variables one point. So give yourself plus 1 if you got to that step. Plus one, all right. And I guess I can go out of five, so I don't forget about that. Um, next is to integrate. Slap on your integral symbols. So I have now the integral of y to the negative three dy. Try to get rid of those fractions because fractions are, they mean quotient rule, and we don't like quotient rule. So integral of x dx. I don't get a point yet. I actually need to take the antiderivative. So antiderivative, I need to um, add one. So it becomes y to the power of negative two. And then divide down. Divide by negative two. Perfect. Um, and then on the right-hand side, it was x to the power of 1, add 1, it turns into 2, divide down. And don't forget your k, your plus c. All right, how many points did we just get there? Coming back to the solution guide, just one point for the antiderivative. So left and the right have to both be correct in order to get the point. So I'll put it above the equal sign if it's ever both. If it's both of, or if it's, yeah, and then if I get a point of piece, then I'll put it uh, more to the left and the right. And then obviously we always get the point for a constant of integration. Constant of integration is one point. All right, then we go to the next step. That was integrate. We go to evaluate. So we know that our x coordinate is 1, our y coordinate is 2. Coming back to this equation, I'm going to write it up here again. Um, this y, ooh, I, I'm going to write this a little bit differently because I need to simplify for my class. Obviously, you could just say, that's a 2 and that's a 1 and be done with it for the AP test. But in my class, I need to simplify, and this is a negative power. So I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over negative 2 y to the positive 2 is equal to x squared over 2 plus cake, my c. Now I'm going to do the evaluate, which is x is 1, so I'm going to change this to is equal to 1 squared over 2 
plus c. And then on the left hand side, I'm going to have 1 over negative 2 times 2 quantity squared. And then I need to simplify. So 2 squared is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So um, negative 1 eighth, or 1 over negative 8, same thing, is equal to um, 1 squared is just 1, so 1 half plus c. Just by getting to this step, you get yourself a point. That I consider using the initial conditions. And again, it's pretty easy at this point to actually solve for c, so let's go ahead and do that. And I think I need to move this step over. I need a, another column worth of space to do some work for those people that want to do step 4, because step 4 is very lengthy. You don't need to do it, though, of course. I say that over and over. Um, I'm going to subtract two on, subtract 1 half on both sides. There it is, so um, subtract one half, subtract one half. I can't subtract one half because those are, like, well, I can, but I need to do have like denominators. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 4 over 4, so that turns into negative 4 over 8. So negative 4 and negative 1 turns into a negative 5 eighths. You can always just move that negative to the top if you want. It's interchangeable. And that is going to be equal to my c. My constant of integration is negative 5 eighths. You don't get any point for just finding the constant of integration. That never, ever happens. It's always just saying you need to use the initial condition. But we can check our work like, hey, c was negative 5 eighths. Whew. All right, we're doing good so far. And then, so I should have been saying here where, okay, I got my plus 1. I should be saying in my notes here that this step is all unnecessary to make sure that it's very clear. Not necessary. You can get a 5 on the AP test without doing the following work. And then also this stuff is also not necessary because we're continuing our work being very clear. Necessary. And I'm just going to continue on. So I'm going to isolate now. I'm doing step 4. Um, I'm going to come back to... I'm going to do this equation. I'm going to deal with him and I'm going to say um, 1 over negative 2y squared is equal to x squared over 2 plus my c, my c is negative 5 eighths, so it's really minus 5 eighths. And then I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides, so I now have negative 2y squared is equal to 1 all over that stuff. So 1 over x squared over 2 minus 5 eighths. And then divide everything by negative 2, which is the equivalent of, <laughs> I can just, using technology here, I can swing this negative 2 and put it down there, essentially, right? And as long as it's being multiplied by that entire quantity, so maybe what I should really do is show my work with technology, which means I copy-paste this right here, and I can change that to a different color, of course. And then I'm going to grab this negative 2, and I'm dividing both sides, so it comes down here, and then go ahead and make sure that there are parentheses. Cool. Done. Um, and then I need a square root to both sides, so let's go ahead and do that um, in blue again. Um, and then this is going to be y is equal to plus or minus the square root of, and actually, when I do the square root of 1, it's just 1, so I'm going to just leave that as 1. Technically, you are square rooting the entire side, but it's going to be 1 all over this giant square root, and then these 2's will cross-cancel, and I'm going to be left with a negative x squared there, and then the 2 and the 8 will cross-cancel, that'll turn into 4 down here, and then the negative will turn into a positive, right? So this is going to be a positive 5 fourths, and then I need to decide, is it positive or is it negative? The, everything over here is either all positive or all negative, which is kind of nice, and my y coordinate in my initial condition is positive, which means I can come back down here and I can kind of scribble out the negative, and there is my final answer. It didn't ask for any domain or anything, so yeah, there it is, and let's check our solution guide by doing all of that work, you just got an extra plus one point. It's just one point. If you use the initial condition, find C, like boil it down to the actual answer, and that is plus one. And you can see why we don't do that step, because it's just one point. Whew, all right, so that is 6.3. Um, now we are on to self-check 6.4, so again, give yourself 15 minutes, and you've unpaused the video because you tried it. I assume you're not just doing it from blank and watching the video because that would be very, very poor practice skills. Right, I haven't even looked at this one for a while. Hopefully I know how to do everything. Good test for Mr. Sindel. Um, we have our x coordinate is 1, our y coordinate is 4, um, and we know that our dy dx is equal to this. So find the slope of the graph where x is equal to 1. So if x is equal to 1, I basically just set, um, oh yeah, so and it's telling us x is equal to 1 up here, which matches so that my y is 4. I'm finding the slope, and the slope is this thing, so I just plug in to this equation, right? So it's, um, I can say my dy dx, or I can label this slope. You don't have to be too formal about it. I'd like being formal, though. 
I'm being formal, not pedantic. Um, three times one squared plus one, all over two times four. Again, I'm just plugging in these conditions. That's what it's saying. Plug in those conditions and find the slope. When I do that, I get um, three times one squared is three plus one, so that's four on the top. I have eight on the bottom. I guess I could cross cancel those fours and I get one half. All right, so how many points do we get? Let's get rid of that solution guide from the last problem so I, I don't make any mistakes. So here's the 1998, and woo, we got it right, one half, and you get one point just for getting the answer. So coming back over here, um, give yourself plus one, and that was gonna be one out of one. Oh my gosh, did I, I, uh, oh wait, I, I did do it correctly on my last one. I said out of five, yeah, out of two, out of two. Make sure that you're giving yourself points and actually adding up out of nine. I forgot to say that on the last one. Um, but we're up to one point now, so we're, we're getting there. Um, and then an equation for the line tangent. We've seen this before. Equation for the line tangent. That was on the last one, right? This is y minus the y coordinate is equal to slope times the quantity of x minus the x coordinate. And then we not only have to find that equation, but then we have to use it to approximate this. So I'm guessing there's at least two points here, if not more. I'm going to guess two, though. Um, so the x coordinate tells us is one. And we know that the y coordinate, when x is one, the y coordinate is four. So I can come back down here and say that that's four. Um, and the tricky bit, which we already did, ah, that's why we had to do it. We have to find the slope. The slope was right there. It's one half. <laughs> We've done all of the heavy lifting. You just have to fill it in, right? So done. I found the equation of the line tangent. I'm gonna guess that's a point. Um, find the equation of the line tangent. That's one point. And they do it a little bit different. Oh no, they do it. Point slope four. There it is. It's exactly the one that we have. Nice. Sometimes they do it in slope-intercept form, right? Um, so now we're going to use that, and I'm going to write down y minus 4 is equal to 1 half, and I'm now plugging in 1.2 in the place of x, so 1.2 minus 1. All right, um, what is that approximation? So 1.2 minus 1 is 0.2, so I'm just going to do some scratch work. And then half of 0.2 is 0.1, and then I'm going to add 4 to both sides, so I'm going to get 4.1. So my answer is y is equal to 4.1. I'm going to guess I get another point for that. Yeah, 4.1, you get a point if you use it to get 4.1. So come back over here, say yes, plus 1 there, plus 1 there. So how many points out of 2 did you get for part B? And I know there's not a lot of room, but you can put it, I like putting it on the left, but if you like putting it in the empty space, you can put it over there. I'm just worried about the three hole punches, so that's why I always put empty space with the three hole punches. Um, part C, now we're going to use, um, ooh, it doesn't actually use our keyword that we had from up here, which is interesting. I guess it's a really old, um, but the particular solution, I don't see any word that says particular solution, so that's kind of weird. Every newer version I've seen always says particular solution, but you can clearly tell that, hey, if I have um, some sort of dy, dx, I need a salt. And then, yeah, it even has initial condition. It sounds very similar to the last problem. So, um, separable differential equation. <sighs> yeah, I'm just kind of upset that it didn't follow the pattern that I thought it would follow. Anyway, we're going to cross multiply first. So, there it goes. 2y dy. We're on step one, which is to separate, by the way, I should have said. Um, and then, on the right-hand side, we can cross multiply the green to get uh, the quantity of 3x squared plus 1, all that times d of x. And you might be wondering why I put the parentheses, and it's because this is a eventual thickness, um, or that's not even a good reason. I think my reason should be you. whenever you cross multiply, you always put parentheses around everything, and you can drop them later if need be. Um, but it definitely uh, helps when you do your integration step. And we're, our separation step is done. I believe we get a point for that. So separate the variables. Yep. If I separate the variables right there, then I get my point. So we got our point. Um, how many points do we have left? One and two. So we have a total of six points left over. So make sure that you do that out of six at the very end. Um, next step, we're going to slap on those integrals. So the integral of 2y d what happened there? 2y dy should be equal to the integral of the quantity of 3x squared plus 1 dx. No point yet. You actually have to do the antiderivative. Um, this is going to be 2y. What's to the power of 1? We're going to go up a power to the power of 2. Then divide down. Divide by 2. And then obviously those are going to cancel out later. I'll leave it up for now. Um, we kind of distribute this integral into both of these two terms, just like we saw before on a previous self-check, and lots and lots of antiderivatives before in uh, unit 5. Um, this is going to be 3x to the power of, it goes up a power, it goes up a power, and then divides down, and then antiderivative 1 is just x, so plus x, and don't forget your cake, your plus c. All right, so 
in this case, um, antiderivative of the dy term. So just the left-hand side, you get the point for just saying that it's y squared. Um, you do need to simplify it, so I'm just going to, whoop, there it is. It's simplified, right? So that's plus 1 if you just get um, the left-hand side, and then plus 1 if you get this whole right-hand side, this whole term. And then plus 1 for your constant of integration. That's what everything says here. dx was 1, and then, oh, what? Whoa, I assume there's a constant of integration. There isn't for this one. And that's what happens when you have, use like really old AP tests, right? The newer ones, the, there is a clear pattern. The older ones, there's no constant of integration. Sorry, you don't get your point there. My bad. Uh, but they were so easy, it's basically saying, yeah, point there and then point there. It's almost the same thing. You might disagree with me. Um, there's your integrate. Now we're going to do evaluate. So our x coordinate is again 1. Our y coordinate again is 4. So I'm plugging in. This is now 4 quantity squared is equal to 3 times, and then the x is 1 cubed, all divided by, uh, I guess, uh, I should have simplified that as well. Coming back here. I should have simplified that to get that point. Now that it's simplified, now I get the point. It should just be x cubed. Sorry about that. This should be um, 1, therefore, cubed plus 1. It's a bad parenthesis. There it is. Uh, plus c. Um, go ahead and simplify this. This is going to be equal now to 16 is equal to 2 plus c. If you get to this step, I know there's like basically one step away from getting c. Give yourself 1, and therefore we can say it's not necessary. But yeah, your c is equal to... 14, and you can probably come up over here and check your work. Yeah, C is equal to 14. Um, uses, yeah, so if you evaluate, if you plug those in, that is one point. It's saying using the initial conditions, essentially, right there. That's where that one point came from. Um, and then this all is not necessary now. I'll write that over here. Not necessary. Ne I can't spell necessary. And how many points do we have over here? Yeah, you get one point for doing all this stuff. Um, what is this point? One answer from student solution given... Oh, because it, there's a part D that's not on here. Use your initial, your solution to find 1.2. The reason that I cut that off is because I don't want you guys to actually do step four. In order to do part D, you have to do step four um, actually isolating. So that's why I cut that point off. So this one is actually... There's an error. And you guys can log the teacher error. This should be out of eight. Um, because I cut off step D. I guess I could add in another point if you want to and say, oh, well, you can just give a point for that plus C and then it's out of nine, right? Um, it's your choice. It's your call. It doesn't really matter. You get This it doesn't go in the grade book, right? Um, continuing on over here, um, we are going to have our original equation, so I'm going to write down this one where it was all canceled out, so I have my, my Y. Let me change the blue here. My Y squared is equal to X cubed plus x, not plus c, but plus 14 now, and then square root both sides. It's both sides. So let me change the yellow square root, square root, and now my y is equal to plus or minus the square root of x to the power of 3 plus x plus 14. And now I ask my question, should my y be positive or negative? It should be positive. So circle the positive sign, or you can rewrite it and say, yes, it should have been y is equal to the positive square root of x to the power of 3 plus x plus 14. And I think, yeah, that that's actually not that hard. Um, but if you solve for y, then you get your point. And what are these notes? Um, yep, we did that. Yep, we make sure that we have our constant of integration. Those are kind of interesting notes. Yep, 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 we did all those things. Perfect, okay. Um, so yes, that is your final plus one. And again, it wasn't that hard to get that point, as long as you did everything else correct, which kind of is difficult to remember. So one, two, three, four, five, and then we said out of six. So yeah, it's up to you. You can make this out of five and make it out of eight for the very final, or you can just give yourself a point for the plus C if you want. I'm going to make that, yeah, plus one. We'll change that to a nine. I, that's my official conclusion. I like making things out of nine to see how you feel it out. Um, yeah, and that concludes self-checked 6.4. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you guys on Monday.